Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Kushbu and in this video we are going to see the question 3 equal parts. You are given an array which consists of only zeros and ones. Divide the array into 3 non-empty parts such that all these parts represent the same binary value. If possible, return any ij such that array with index 0 to i is the first part, i plus 1 till j minus 1 is the second part and j till array dot length is the third part. And all three parts have equal binary values. If it is not possible, return minus 1 comma minus 1. Note that the entire part is used when considering the binary value it represents. For example, 110 represents 6 in decimal and not 3. Also, leading zeros are allowed. So, 011 and 11 represent the same value. Now, we are given this examples over here wherein, let's see the first one. If you break down into three equal parts, it will be this one, then you will have the 01 and then you can have this 01. So, the indexes that we need to give is the ending index of the first part which is 0 and the starting index of the third part which is 3. So, that is how the output comes. Now, let's see this example number 2. Over here, we have four ones which can never be divided into three equal parts and so the output is going to be minus 1 comma minus 1 and similarly we can apply the logic for example 3 and get this output. Now let's go ahead and take one of the examples and see how we can solve this question. Let's take this example and see how we can get the output. So we need to divide this array into three different parts that can have the same number. So, it becomes these three parts which depict the number 5. Now, the output will be the last index of the first partition and the first index of the last partition. So, over here the output will be 2,8. Now that we know how to give the output, let's see how we can partition this array. So, for that, let's see the basic intuitions or deductions that we can make from the question itself. As the question says, we need to partition it into three equal parts, which means all the three parts must have equal number of ones. And thus, the number of ones must be divisible by three. So, the count of one is equal to three into k, where k is the number of ones in each partition. If the number is not divisible by three, we can simply return minus one comma minus one as it is not possible to divide the array. The second deduction is that if all the numbers in the array are 0, then we can return any three partition. We do not need to calculate any further. And the third one is we need to see that the equivalent decimal number in all the partition is same. So let's see how we can partition the number. Here is the first step that we are going to need. That is the number of ones that are present in the array. For this particular example, we have six ones and each my partition should contain two ones. So I have taken the value of k as two. Now the second part, find the partition with equal number of ones. For this, we'll take dedicated variables to define the partitions, which are i1, j1, i2, j2 and i3, j3. Initially, we have it as minus 1 and now we'll start partitioning. Now, what are the conditions that we are going to use for partitioning? While partitioning, we are going to consider a partition wherein the start index has the number 1 and the end index should also have the number 1. So, whenever the count of the 1 in the current partition becomes equal to k, we say that this is one defined partition for us. Now, you will say that what happens to the zeros and what if there was a zero after this? We will take a look at it in the later part. For now, let's take this condition and partition the array. We will start with the first index. But before that, let's see the conditions that will update our variables. If the current count of 1 is equal to k, 2k or 3k, that means we have reached the end and so we assign the index as j1, j2 and j3. On the other hand, if the current count of 1 is 1 or k plus 1 or 2k plus 1, that means it is the starting of that particular partition. And so we will assign that to i1, i2 and i3. So our partitions are going to be divided in following way that 
my count of 1 is starting from 1 to k, from k plus 1 to 2k and from 2k plus 1 to 3k. Make sense? Okay, let's move ahead. With this first index, the current count of 1 becomes 1 and so we will update it in i1. So the index for i1 becomes 0 depicting this first one that we have encountered. For the next 0 we do nothing. So we'll move to the next one that we have and with that the current one count becomes 2 which is equivalent to k and so we update our j1 because we have got this k. Similarly for now 0 we do nothing and we move on to the next one that we have and over here the count of 1 becomes k plus 1 which means we need to update i2 and so we update i2 with the index. Similarly we do for j2, i3 and j3. So now we have the partition ready with us wherein we are only considering the number starting from 1 and ending with 1. So over here these becomes our partition. As we have these partitions with us, what we need to do next is compare the numbers that we have in this. If the numbers are not equal, then there is no chance of bifurcating it into three parts and so we can simply return minus one comma minus one. But in this case, as we see, the numbers are same. Now comes the next question. What about the zeros? So for that, let's take one more zero at the end and see what happens. As we have this zero at the end, the number that we need to consider for this last partition is not 101 but 1010 because this is a trailing zero. And so what we need to do is we need to count the trailing zeros that are present for a partition. So that becomes this. For the partition number one, that is the first partition, we have two trailing zeros. For second one, we have no. And for the third one, we have one trailing zero. So if we have a trailing zero for the end number, that is for the number in the third partition, then we need to consider that and we need to have minimum those number of zeros in all the partition at the end. So over here, as we have one zero in the last partition, we need to have at least one zero in first and second. But as this violates the condition that second has no trailing zeros, the output again will be minus one comma minus one. For now, let's take a zero in the second partition also. Now what happens? The last partition has the number 1010, second partition has 1010, but the first partition has 10100. So what do we do with this zero? This zero is actually going to be a part of the second partition as a leading zero and not the trailing zero for the first partition because leading zeros do not have any effect on the number that it is forming. And so our partitions become like this. What is the output? The output will be the J1 that we have found, that is this part 2, plus the trailing 0 that we need to have, that is 1, 0. So this becomes our first partition. Then the second partition comes and the third partition will start from the J2 that ended, plus the trailing 0 that we had, plus 1 for going to the next window. So that gives us J2 plus trailing 0 plus 1. So that will give you the output. So now we know the basic gist of the question when we need to return minus 1 comma minus 1. How do we need to partition? How we need to consider the trailing zeros and how we find the output from the indexes that we have found out plus the trailing zeros that we need in our partitions. So the theory part over here is over. Let's go ahead and code this out. So firstly, let's take n, which will give array.length. Secondly, we'll take one count that will give us the count of ones. And we'll take a loop and count the number of ones in the array. So this is counting number of ones. Now we'll take the base exit condition, which is if The number is not divisible by 3, we return minus 1 comma minus 1. If one count is equal to 0, return any partition. So let's write that condition. 
So over here, you can return 0 comma n minus 1. And now what we are going to do is find k, which is 1 count by 3. And now create partition. So for creating the partition, we need 6 variables. And we'll take an integer variable to hold current count of 1, which is initially going to be 0. And now we take a for loop. In this for loop, we are going to check if my array of i is equal to 1. Because in that case only, we are going to update our variables. We need to first do current count plus 1. <clears throat> and then we need to see if current count is equal to 1. Then we need to update i1 equal to i. Otherwise, if current count is k plus 1, which means i2 is going to be equal to i. If current count is 2k plus 1, then i3 is going to be updated with the current index. Now, let's write the conditions for j. If current count is equal to k, j1 equal to i. Similarly, for j2 and j3. So this will give me i and j values for all the three partitions. Now comes the part wherein we compare the three partitions. So for that, there are two methods. The first is by using extra space. Let's use that first. So this is the first part. And similarly, we'll have part 2 and part 3. And this will just change to i2, i3 and j2, j3. We are taking this plus 1 because this index is not inclusive. Now that we have these with us, we just need to compare it. So if so if part 1 and part 2 are not equal or part 1 and part 3 are not equal, that means we have an unequal part and we cannot divide the array. And so we can just return minus 1 comma minus 1. Now, if this also passes, we need to take care of the trailing zeros. And for that, we need to first count the number of trailing zeros in first, second and third part. So the trailing zeros in first partition is equivalent to starting of second partition, which is i2 minus ending of first partition minus 1. Similarly, for second, we'll do starting of third partition minus ending of second partition minus 1. And for third, we'll do the end of the array minus ending of the third partition minus 1. So now we have the zeros with us. Again, there is an exit condition that is if the number of trailing zeros in third partition is still greater than the minimum number of zeros present in first and second, then we have no chance of partitioning it into three equal parts. And so we can return minus one comma minus one. Once we are done with this part also and the code comes below this, we can return our indices and these indices are last index of the first partition which is going to be j1 plus the number of trailing zeros that we are going to have and that is given by third and the first index of the last partition which is j2 plus third plus one so this will give me last index of the second partition and this plus one will go to the start of the next partition Let's run this code and we are getting a perfect result. Let's submit this and this got submitted. Now, the time complexity for this is O of n as we are going to iterate over the array. The space complexity is also going to be O of n for this part, which we can reduce to O of 1. Now, let's do that. So, we'll just remove this part and we'll write a while loop. So, let's take a few variables. So we'll take start, mid and end, which are going to be i1, i2 and i3. So these are the starting indexes of my three partitions. And we already have our k with us. So let's start a while loop. So while k minus minus is still greater than zero and array of start 
is equal to array of mid and array of mid is equal to array of end which means the numbers are equal so i can just do start plus plus mid plus plus end plus plus so this will continue till i'm finding equal values now if everything was equal my k will become minus 1 so i need to take that into mind if my k is still greater than or equal to 0 then i can return mu int of minus 1 comma minus 1 as we found an inequality and this loop broke before it should have broken so that's the o of 1 space method let's run this also and let's submit this and it got submitted with this solution our time complexity still stays o of n but the space complexity becomes o of 1 that's it for this video guys i hope you liked it and i'll see you in another one so till then keep learning keep coding Thank you.